Who went on the high pop? For those of you that didn't, here's a little tribute to the high pop. So here comes the waterbed. I mean the bus. If anybody was on that bus, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It was just, it was incredible. Like the bus's seat, the bus driver's seat, what? He, like, you, it's like he had a spring under his seat or something. It was crazy. <laughs> All right, so here's us at, it, it, was it Mike Emery? Is that his last name? Emerson. At Mike Emerson. So this is Mike Emerson's place where we all met in his gigantic driveway and hopped on the bus. And you can't see the bus driver's face, but he was smiling. Gene Miller's Avery and Backyard. I had heard Monica wanted to do a scavenger hunt on our road trip, but never in a million years did I expect this. Find the beekeeper. <laughs> Sorry, we've gone surfing. This was actually the sign on the door of the first APR we went to. So go to the next. We all stood there. We're like, is that Gene? Is that Gene? Hey, are you Gene? Hey, where is the lady? Listen, is Gene Miller here today? Because I wouldn't meet her. <laughs> so Gene had a couple hives out front. Monica did a great job going, okay, let's get people talking. What do you see? <laughs> the grass is too high. Meanwhile, I'm in the there's nobody <laughs> there's nobody here to yell at me. I'm gonna walk around this lady's property and see what she's got going on. So I walk into the backyard and in her backyard she had a sanctuary. It was absolutely beautiful, just flowers and gardens, and I was so overwhelmed by all that. I think I forgot to snap a picture, so I don't have a picture of it, but the backyard was definitely something to remember. From there, we went to Lynn Arles Apriarian Sanctuary. And Lynn had, I've been there before this. I, I you know, I, I gave everybody one page to just do this really quick. This does not do it justice. Lynn's backyard was amazing. She's got chickens, she's got roosters, she's got chicken wolves, like to protect her from the fox, we had this little tunnel where the chickens could just roam all over her backyard from spot to spot. She had horizontal hives. She had keeper's hives, dado hives. She had regular long straw hives. Was there anything she has every hive ever made. She has every hive ever made. Um, she's got gardens. She's got, um, it, it was just, it was absolutely amazing. And it's hard to see the pictures. Right after Lynn's, Mock is like, it's time to drink. So we went outside in front of the neighbor. neighbor's yard. I know, I know, I was sitting in front of the neighbor's yard. The bee's knees. So we, yep, wait, isn't this a bee's knees they're giving us? And then this picture, it's amazing what you see when you do these presentations and you're just like, what's going on in this picture behind me? So if you go to the next frame, <laughs> there's a little bit of trick happening in the middle of the picture. There's, there's Monica, there's her husband saying, Says, Lori, give me another drink, and, and Lori hooking him up. Anyway, that was fun. Then we went to Tom McKinney's. And this is the reason for safety equipment, because this is where everybody got bit. Um, yeah. this, I live on down 352. And these hives, you can see them from the road. I, have, for five years now, have been wondering who owns this property or whose hives these were. And I finally got to meet the guy. Um, so he opened up a horizontal hive. He did a Demaray uh, demonstration for us. Seven bumps. Oh, oh, Tom's here? There he is. There he is. Yeah. yeah. He did an awesome job showing us inside his hives. And uh, you can tell he's very excited. And he had a table of food and coffee set up for us. Not knowing that Monica fed us drinks and donuts, right? People, so we all got there. And we're like, oh, oh, there's more food. Yeah. Then we went to Mark Meters. Wait, Meadows. <laughs> wait, wait. Where are we? Yeah, Monica's driveway. Yep, that really happened. We didn't get off the bus, but this is what we saw. And I did a little red and green background for you. So her hives are absolutely beautiful. And why did this happen? Faulty GPS, incompetent driver? Nope, pretty sure it was the organizer having too much fun. <laughs> the whole time I'm going, Monica, I don't think this is Mark's way to his house. I done what? No, that's a Oh, you put your little symbol on there. <laughs> so this is Mark's property. And the first thing you notice when you walk in are these funny looking hives. And you're like, wait, what are those? What? He had rabbit cages, so I put a little picture of rabbits up there. He did a demonstration of his flow hive up in the top right. 
I didn't actually see this. Somebody gave me this picture. Um, uh, did you do a demonstration? Yeah. I was just walking all over your property. I was so amazed. I'm like, look at this, look at this, look at this. He had swings. He had piles of wood that looked like beehives. It was so cool. So Mark, in his one acre of property had a lot going on as well. It was pretty awesome. Then we went to Joseph's Fort. I mean, Apiar. And if you were there, you know what I mean. <laughs> And, oh, you can't even see it, but there's an army truck camouflaged by grass right here because, yes, that's what we saw on his lawn. And we're like, what's that? Don't you worry about that. I have three lives only, and then everyone was amazed because the brood binders and the newbies went in and talked about the brood binders. Yeah. So, but he had a dado hive, or now a keeper's hive. Maybe you can comment, George. But he had a fountain in front of it, and I was trying to get him to say, where do you sit to work that hive? Because you've got a, like a little fountain right in front of it. I'm not sure how you work that hive. Huh? <laughs> Just sit in the water in the summertime? And then finally we finished up at Mike Emerson's and Gerald's Apiary Honey Kitchen and Backyard. Now, I, I think by the time I got there, I was so exhausted. I didn't take a lot of pictures, so I was on email with... Um, forget the guy's name, Jeff Chambers, maybe? And Jeff gave me a couple pictures of the 10. He's here. Um, he's here? That's you. Thank you, Jeff, for sending those pictures. That was you, right? Um, yeah. Um, he gave me the 10 picture and the picture of um, Mike cooking. And then that's, I don't, I didn't get a better picture of his honey kitchen, but Mike's honey kitchen was amazing. It was a shed outside and it had everything. Um, and I wanted to also do a presentation on the different ways that people store frames. I might save that for a later meeting. But there's a little example of um, Mike's there. I have to um, jump in on this. The yeah. day before, my husband and I deliver your food, drink, whatever, to the after party, right? And his wife, Cheryl, yelled, Swarm! And uh, it was swarming. Why did he get five and just in it three days before? Like, I can't believe, I can't believe it. So we're watching this massive, massive. And he picks up two metal. Heavy shuttle that starts hanging, playing it, but walks out there 10 minutes. Every one of those keys covered the front of that hive and went back in. It was crazy cool. So we have that tanging. So Lynn did a uh, demonstration on tanging. And yeah, that's what she's describing now. So I don't know who else was involved, but the CCA wants to thank everybody the uh, apiary owners, uh, participants. And everybody that made this a special day. And a very special thank you to this amazing woman. Thank you. Thank you.